Hi guys, today we're talking about quantum physics and uh, we are going to be discussing how to solve the Dubre wavelength. So in this problem, it says calculate the Dubre wavelength of a proton moving at the following speeds. Now before I show you how to solve this really easy, simple problem, I'll tell you a little bit about this French guy. So in his doctoral dissertation in 1924, Dubre postulated that because photons have wave and particle characteristics, perhaps all forms of matter have both particle and wave properties. He furthermore postulated that the frequency of matter waves, which are waves associated with particles having a non-zero rest energy, will obey the Einstein relationship for photons, and that relationship, as we know, is E equals H times F, okay? And so for him, more specifically, he's saying that the frequency of matter, okay, is equal to the energy divided by Planck's constant, which is kind of interesting to think about. Um, if this is the case, that means that, uh, you know, every, every thing, every matter, uh, that has mass is a wavelength. It's just that they, I mean, it has such a high frequency that they appear solid, okay? So anyways, getting back to the problem. Uh, for this, it's really simple. You just take whatever wavelength you have, and that is going to equal h divided by your mass times velocity, velocity. And as you know, m times v is momentum. So anyways, so when we do that, so all you have to do is you take uh, Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds, okay, and then you're going to divide that by the mass of a proton, which is 1.6726 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, okay, and multiply that by the known velocity, which is 1.6726. 94 times 10 to the fourth meters per second. All right. And when you do that, you're going to get 2.04 times 10 to the negative 11th meters. All right. So it's going to equal 2.04 times 10 to the negative 11th meters. So that's actually a pretty small uh, frequency. Or, you know, if you were to do this, it would be 0 0.02 uh, nanometers. Okay? And you just do the same thing for that. Instead, just of this 1.94, plug in that, and we get uh, 1.85. <laughs> so even... Uh, even a smaller, uh, or a, well, a, a smaller wavelength, which obviously equates to a higher uh, frequency. Okay. So what do we say? So it's uh, for part B, it's going to equal 1.85 times 10 to the negative 14 meters. So you've got a much smaller. Uh, wavelength, which equates to a higher frequency, which also equates to a higher energy state. And that is how you solve the Dubre, the, uh, <laughs> Dubre wavelength.